In this video, I'm going to dive into schema drift and inferred data types and how those things work together within Azure Data Factory's mapping data flows. This is a bit of an advanced topic, so if you haven't already, I recommend going back and checking some of the, the introductory videos on ADF mapping data flows and schema drift first. So let's start here um, with this data flow that I have on my screen, and this is going to be a schema drift example. Now, in this demo, I have two different sources. The first one is a full schema drift data set. So what I mean by that is I have schema drift turned on. I also have inferred drifted column types turned on as well. When I look at the data set definition, you'll see that there is no schema at all. So notice how I call this in my data flow. I call this source as schema on read. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to always read and work with the data, whatever columns are present at the time of the execution of this data flow. So this is schema drift, completely schema on read. The second version of my movies data is in the bottom, which is movies with schema. So in this case, I have a, a data set without schema drift turned on. So there is no inferred column types. And the data set itself points directly to a file with a schema. So this is the more traditional sort of hardened schema. Uh, this is the, uh, you know, the schema early versus schema late binding. And if I go back to the data flow, um, what that presents to you is a, an actual projection. So when you write your data flow, you now get the projection coming from that physical properties, those physical properties of that source. So in this case, this is a CSV file. All text limited files are read in natively as strings. We don't know what the data types are. There is no uh, data type you know, stored within files such as CSVs or text files. And so what we offer you instead is this uh, detect data type capability. So when you click on that button, what we'll do is we're going to send um, a request out to the um, Spark cluster that we're connected to for your debug session. So I have my debug turned on. So I have a live debug cluster that I can send this request down to. What we'll do is we'll sample some of that data from your source and we will infer the data types from the data within your uh, data sets. And once we have that, the projection will no longer be strings. It will or only be strings. It'll have the um, it'll detect the types of each column. And so the movie was just my identifier. My primary key is an integer. Title string, genre string, rotten tomato, which is misspelled and has a space in it, is not good. Is a string. By the way, it's not good because with this, the space. Because um, to show you this uh, working functioning demo with inferred data types in schema drift, I'm going to land this data as parquet. Parquet will store the data types so we can look at that and make sure that we're doing this correctly and then we infer that the year and the rating are short now you can change these if you wish if you don't like these you can do that manually you can also set the um, filter for these so if you click on define default format you can say that so when it, when the uh, detect data type finds a number type always make that a long instead of a short for example so you can set that here um, within the default format, but I just left it as default. That'll work just fine for the demo. Okay, great. So the bottom flow, the bottom stream, I should say, with movies, the schema has the schema. The top is schema on read with no schema at all. <clears throat> However, these data sets do combine, so I'm going to join these later on. Now, before I join, there's one thing I want to do, and let me show you why. On the join, I want to join these together, and movie is my key. Okay, so I'm going to join movie on movie, and they both have to be the same data type, which is going to be what we inferred, we found here, which is integer. Now, to do that, remember, I have no schema at all, so inspect really shows me nothing. Inspect on the stream at the top with schema drift on and no schema. Schemaless, schema on read, will have no early binding. The late, it's only, only going to be bound during execution runtime, so it will have no design time binding, so the inspect, the metadata is going to be empty. So how do I join? How can I join in this movie ID? In fact, if I go to inspect, I can see that I do have uh, two movies. I have movie left and movie from the right. How did I do that? I did that by going to uh, creating a derived column. In the derived column, I used a lookup function uh, within the derived column. So not the lookup transformation, but a function called by name. This will search out the, uh, the, the, uh, the source file, and it will look for any column that is named a movie. So I know I have one, so I can do that. And I can set the data type here. So I'm going to cast it as an integer so it'll match on the join. So by name, find the column called movie. I didn't mean to do that. And there we go. And that's all I need to do. Now you have part of your metadata 
the call of movie. And everything else will be schema drift because I turned on the button, uh, the checkbox called allow schema drift. Okay, so we're good. Now we have the column that we can join on. So now I can join the left with the right on movie, and this is all valid within M data flow. Now the catch is that when I get all the way out to my sync, I have to have schema drift on here. So I have allow schema drift turned on. I have to allow that because I don't know what's coming in through the top stream at all, except for I know that I found that movie column. What I do then is I'm in the settings. I'm going to point, I'm sorry, let me first show you that I'm pointing to my parquet. A data set. So my, park, my parquet data set has no scheme in it. This is going to create a brand new parquet file in this folder called output slash parquet. So in the settings, uh, I also want to write a file called parquetmovies.parquet. So you name your file in settings. I'm using output to single file simply because this is a demo and the small data, so it'll fit in here nicely. When you have larger data, you don't want to use this option. You want to use other options such as patterns or per partition. So you maintain that partitioning within Spark. But one thing that's going to happen is when I am here uh, mapping all of these columns, I'm going to have auto mapping on and that will say to Data Factory to send through all of the columns uh, whenever they're found. All right. So if you turn that off, you can see that these are mapped one to one. Now the way that I got to that point was going over to the select. And in the select, there's a couple of things I need to do. The first thing I need to do is I need to replace that space in the rotten tomato. It's not spelled correctly, but I'm not going to worry about that here. But the space will not, uh, the parquet format will not let me create this column name with a space in it. So I have to uh, replace it with a uh, the space with nothing. So I create a, a rule. So I create a select with a single rule saying true. So I want all columns to go through this filter. I always want to replace every um, space. So every space will be replaced completely. And you can see that rotten space tomato becomes just rotten tomato. Now one other thing I wanted to show you, which is that back in my derived column, there's something else I want to do. I want to also take every string column from my drifted source, and I want to make it a knit cap. So this is sort of the camel casing or the proper casing function that we have. And I want to call each one of those new uh, knit capped or initial capped um, column names, I want to call them the incoming column name underscore caps. But remember, I have no idea what they are because there is no metadata. This is schema -less. You do that with a rule. So I'm going to say any type that is string, I want to do this because init capping or uh, proper casing a number doesn't make any sense. The only way I can say do this only on string columns is to know that the columns coming in are strings. And you do that by saying infer drifted column types. So now when I uh, accept any drifted column type, I will get that same infer data type that I got down here by clicking on detect data type. The system itself with an ADF will infer for the data types and this will just work. You can see that by going over to the sync. If I go to my data preview on the sync, you'll see that I get two new columns, excuse me, uh, yeah, two new columns, which is underscore caps, title, and genre. The other columns are not strings, so it does not try to proper case those. And you see my rotten tomato got fixed. So through patterns and through inferring data types, uh, you can receive and work with data within your data flow that is fully schemaless, schema on read, late bound. Okay, I hope you found that useful.